For decades, we have all grown up watching science fiction movies and TV shows. And we have all dreamed of going where no man has gone before. That time is here and now. We are on the very edge of a new era in humanity. Within the next few years, mankind will not only be journeying to other planets, we will be inhabiting them. Our ultra-high technology robots are even now walking upon the surface of Mars, sending back information and preparing the ground for our coming. This is not science fiction. This is science fact. And just as before in the history of humanity, the process is being led by several unique, intelligent, and talented individuals such as Elon Musk. Rocket ships take off vertically and return to Earth vertically. Humans are shuttled to the International Space Station as if they're traveling from New York to Los Angeles. Supersonic spacecraft fly mankind around the globe virtually in space just to make things faster. But what does the future hold for us? We cannot maintain peace on Earth. How can we do so in space? NASA, SpaceX, and Virgin are not the only ones with eyes upon the stars. Russia, and especially China, also have desires in that direction. The race for space is on, and all bets are off. Almost 200,000 years ago, the journey of the Homo sapiens began. A species of extremes, the story of humanity exemplifies and magnifies the polarities of all universal forces, destruction and creation, savagery and civilization, genius and depravity. Humans were also defined by their struggle with their own place within the universe and a constant drive to discover, invent, and explore worlds and possibilities beyond their own limited experience. This curiosity led to the development of mythology, religion, and science. However, the same impulses driving mankind to invent and explore also threatened the survival of both themselves and their environment. By the 21st century, humanity was leading itself towards extinction. Yet, at the same time as humanity was driving itself to destruction, the brightest minds of the species edged even closer to the possibility of escaping Earth and even the creation of a new form of life not confined or limited by the rate of organic evolution, artificial intelligence. This is an exploration of humanity, its quest for understanding, its path to destruction, and its hopes for salvation in the vastness of space. Within a relatively short time, humans, the omnivorous, descendants of primitive primates, outcompeted all of the forms of life on planet Earth, a highly social animal with the ability for self-reflection, abstract thought, complex planning, and the formation of advanced social structures. These creatures soon began forming permanent colonies across all of Earth's biospheres. Centered in pockets of settlement, they began using their own intellect and the resources around them to reshape the world. They were also a highly resilient and violent creature, driving all competitors into extinction. However, prior to around 10,000 years ago, humans wandered the Earth hunting and gathering the resources they needed without settling in any permanent spot, with little time to pursue questions beyond their everyday survival. The move from hunter-gatherer life into permanent settlements had a number of advantages, which allowed humans to begin looking beyond the issues presented by the daily need to survive. As farming developed in the Middle East, societies began to build up surpluses of food, domesticated animals, 
and construct complex tools. This surplus of resources and advancements in technology then allowed certain of its members of human society to explore the abstract questions mankind had always asked. Ancient priests, freed from the need to take part in manual labor and seeing in celestial bodies representations of the deities responsible for their own creation, meticulously charted the passage of stars and planets. These astronomers were the first explorers of space, able to predict the movements of the heavens through practices perceived as magical to most members of their society. At the same time as looking towards outer space, these same early explorers also looked towards inner space for answers. Psychoactive substances used in conjunction with various ritual acts were seen as a way of making contact with planes of existence beyond normal experience. The mind was open to the gods. The idea that realms beyond normal perception held answers to ancient questions were often linked to the religions of each society. For example, the ancient Greeks often turned to oracles for answers to life's problems. The oracles, believed by some to be under the influence of drugs, would give a reply which was thought to come straight from the gods themselves. As society advanced, so did the methods by which humans searched for answers. A series of events in humanity's later history led to the emergence of science and the rejection of mysticism and religion as a means of gaining true knowledge about the nature of the universe. Astrologers became physicists, shamans became doctors, and alchemists became chemists. With advances in science came industrialization. These advancements brought with them improvements in agricultural practices and medicine, leading life expectancy and birth rates to increase amongst the most advanced centers of human settlement. Between 1804 and 2019, the human population increased from 1 billion to more than 7 billion. From 1999 to 2012 alone, the human population increased from 6 billion to 7 billion. The rapid increase in population rate led some to predict that by 2150, the human population would have reached around 21 billion. Humanity spread like bacterial colonies across the face of an infected earth. From its dark side, great seas of light canvassed the planet as towns became cities and cities became bustling megacities. The largest of these covered vast areas of countryside. In the 21st century, the Japanese city of Tokyo was humanity's largest settlement with a population of almost 40 million. As humanity replicated itself at an insatiable rate, it edged even closer to the maximum carrying capacity of planet Earth. Scientists at Harvard University set the 10 billion mark as the maximum capacity of human life that the planet could sustain. By the early 21st century, the human population had grown to such an extent that it was only able to be fed because of what is known as the Green Revolution. This was a combination of scientific advancements which improved crop yields by 250% globally and allowed for the continued growth of human populations. However, the situation was unstable as monoculture meant that crop failure in one country could have disastrous consequences across the planet. The Green Revolution and high agricultural yields could also only be maintained by the fossil fuel industry, a finite and quickly disappearing source of energy. The ever-increasing need for more agricultural land and the expansion of urban centers led to the destruction of many of planet Earth's most diverse ecosystems. This, in turn, led to an increase in the levels of CO2 in the Earth's atmosphere. 
as fewer plants meant less absorption of carbon dioxide from the air. In the early years of the early 21st century, humans were cutting down an estimated 18 million acres of trees each year. Nowhere was this visible more than in the Amazon rainforest, Earth's largest and most diverse ecosystem. Logging, mining, and colonization had by the 21st century destroyed 20% of this vital ecosystem. The destruction of ecosystems able to filter CO2 from the atmosphere only exacerbated the most pressing threat to the survival of life on Earth, global warming. Every year, humanity was consistently increasing carbon dioxide levels through its burning of fossil fuels. On Earth, human activities alter the natural composition of Earth's atmosphere. Over the space of a century, the burning of fossil fuels like coal and oil increased the concentration of atmospheric carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This happened because the coal or oil burning process combines carbon with oxygen in the air to make CO2. The clearing of land for agriculture, industry, and other human activities also increased concentration of these gases. Atmospheric CO2 prevents heat from the sun from radiating back out into space, thus causing climate change. These drastic changes in Earth's climate were the biggest threat to humanity's continual survival. As global temperatures increased, Arctic land ice and glaciers began to melt, causing sea levels to rise and threatening many coastal settlements. The increase in global temperatures also drastically altered the Earth's weather patterns. Hurricanes became more intense and frequent, and once fertile areas were becoming barren wastelands, thus resulting in prolonged droughts and global instability. The increase in CO2 also led to the slow destruction of ocean habitats through water acidification. CO2, when combined with seawater, creates carbonic acid. Human use of fossil fuels increased ocean acidity by 30% over a period of 200 years, a rate of increase which would naturally have taken around 20 million years. Ocean acidification, coupled with rises in sea temperature, severely impacted oceanic ecosystems. By the early 21st century, over a quarter of the planet's coral reefs were damaged beyond repair. Human damage to the world's oceanic ecosystems were further worsened by increasing levels of water pollution. In the early 21st century, humans were disposing over 8 million tons of garbage into the oceans every year. This garbage was overwhelmingly plastic, which does not biodegrade. Giant floating islands of plastic waste, some the size of entire nations, spread across the world's oceans. These masses of plastic killed any marine life unfortunate enough to accidentally consume or become trapped in it. The ever-increasing need to improve agricultural yields also helped to pollute the world's oceans. Artificial fertilizers used on crops seeped into the oceans, killing many types of organisms. Thus, the 21st century saw the destruction of life in the world's oceans, the very place where organic life on Earth began. Humans were not only polluting the water in the oceans, but also the skies above. When humans burned coal, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen oxides were released into the atmosphere. When these gases rose up to the sky, they accumulated in the clouds until they became saturated. The reaction of these polluting compounds with the water in the clouds led to the formation of acid rain. When the rain fell, it accumulated into bodies of acidic water. The ground surrounding the water soaks up the acid, depleting the soil of essential nutrients. 
trees that absorbed the acid accumulated toxins that damaged leaves and slowly killed large areas of forest. Acid rain was also known to eliminate entire species of fish, causing a snowball effect of damage to the ecosystem that relied on diverse organisms to sustain the environment. Many scientists were predicting not even considering the fragile supports upon which their world was constructed. This was of course not the first time that human civilization had collapsed. 1500 years before Christ, the civilized world was dominated by three great superpowers. The Mycenaeans of Greece, the Hittites of the Near East, and the mighty Egyptian Empire. In around 1200 BC, these civilizations disintegrated, and the world as everyone knew ended. This was an event humans of the 21st century referred to as the Bronze Age Collapse. The Mycenaeans were Europe's great power of the Bronze Age world. They were the most advanced civilization on the continent, able to produce incredible works of art, construct massive fortifications and palaces, and dominate all of their European neighbors through trade and warfare. Across the Aegean Sea, the Hittite Empire dominated the Middle East. The Hittite war machine had left a path of destruction across Asia, conquering all in their path. The third great superpower was the wealthy Egyptian Empire in the south. Egyptian expansion had created an empire which stretched across both Africa and the Middle East. The monuments of Egyptian power, wealth, and genius are still visible, grave markers of an extinct civilization. In the 12th century BC, these civilizations were rocked by a series of events which brought them to their knees. The Hittite Empire and the Mycenaeans disappeared completely, whilst the weakened Egyptians entered into a period of decline. The collapse of these civilizations was the end of a golden age in human history. The causes behind this epical event have many parallels with the difficulties facing humanity in the 21st century. The first notable causes of the collapse was climate change and environmental changes. Changes in sea level. An increase in more extreme weather conditions was a major cause of the collapse. There is evidence to suggest that increases in global temperatures resulted in widespread crop failure, famine, and instability. Within a period of 50 years, all major cities in the civilized world were destroyed. Most of these cities revealed signs of violent conflict and purposeful destruction. It is likely that the instability caused by environmental changes caused conflict over precious resources and land. This also in turn, no doubt, led to a refugee crisis as major centers of population were destroyed and their citizens displaced. So here we have the collapse of civilization as a result of climate change, environmental instability, conflict over resources, population displacement, and internal instability. All of these were issues which were becoming increasingly more serious in the 21st century where the world again was dominated by great power blocks. Those who cannot remember the past are doomed to repeat it. Human society was once again headed towards collapse. However, this time the stakes were much higher and the problems much greater. The great threats faced by mankind on planet Earth led many to begin looking to the stars for salvation, as the priests, shamans, and astrologers of past ages had observed the heavens in the hope of answers and a way of controlling the world around them. So too did their more modern equivalents. In 2017, the British scientist Stephen Hawking warned that if humanity did not change its current course regarding climate change, they would have only 200 years left to escape Earth before the species would face an extinction event. 
Hawking stated that our physical resources are being drained at an alarming rate. We have given our planet the disastrous gift of climate change, rising temperatures, reduction of the polar ice caps, deforestation, and decimation of animal species. He also stated that there was an ever-increasing risk of humanity being destroyed by scenarios such as nuclear war or a virus. For Hawking, the path ahead was clear. According to him, spreading out may be the only thing that saves us from ourselves. I am convinced that humans need to leave Earth. The history of humanity's space exploration began as early as the 4th century BCE. The ancient Greek philosopher Aristarchus of Samos was the first human being to advance the theory that the Earth revolved around the Sun. This heliocentric model was the first step in humanity's understanding of Earth's place within the solar system. In the 16th century, the Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus made further calculations which led to the discovery that not only the Earth, but the other planets also revolved around the Sun, which was clearly at the center of the solar system. These discoveries were further advanced by astronomers such as Johannes Kepler and Galileo Galilei. Theories such as this paved the way for later space exploration. Man wanted to know what or who was out there. Were we alone in the vastness of space? Was it possible that only one single lonely planet had the correct ingredients for life to emerge? Rooted on this planet Earth, we had no way of knowing until the emergence of true science and the ability to escape the gravitational pull of Mother Earth. The first time humanity truly reached out to the stars was in 1957. This was the year in which Russia sent its first satellite into space, named Sputnik 1. This tiny metallic sphere was the spark which ignited the space race from the mid to late 20th century. This race saw the world's two great superpowers, America and the USSR battling over who would be the greatest space-exploring power. After three months of transmitting radio data back to Earth, Sputnik 1 eventually fell out of orbit and burned up whilst re-entering the atmosphere. The next milestone in space exploration was momentous. In 1961, the USSR sent the first man, Yuri Gagarin, into space. Yuri was launched into the infinite vacuum in a small spacecraft named Vostok 1. For the first time in its history, humanity had escaped the confines of its home planet. Yuri orbited the Earth for 108 minutes before returning safely to Earth. Two years later, the Soviets would send a woman into space also, Valentina Tereshkova who orbited the Earth for a record-breaking three days, orbiting the Earth a total of 48 times. In 1965, the Soviets once again led humanity into new heights of space exploration when Alexei Leonov performed the first spacewalk. Whilst orbiting the Earth, Alexei exited his spacecraft and drifted through vast expanse of space in only his spacesuit. A new milestone was reached three years later when the Americans finally entered the space race in a significant way. In 1968, NASA sent out its newest spacecraft, Apollo 8, to make a journey around the moon and back. Apollo slingshot itself around the moon, marking the furthest any human had ever gone. In 1969, however, marked humanity's greatest ever explorational achievement when NASA astronauts landed on the moon itself. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin spent a day on the surface of the moon. After eight days, these American astronauts touched back down on Earth. Six further moon landing expeditions would see a total of 12 astronauts walking on the moon. The following decade would see humanity making its first tentative steps towards an exploration of the planet Mars. 
In 1976, NASA sent its first spacecraft to Mars. After landing, the Viking 1 spacecraft sent a series of pictures back to Earth. For the first time, humanity had seen the surface of an alien world. The success of the Viking mission led NASA to send a series of spacecraft and vehicles to Mars. Unlike Viking 1, many of these were not stationary, but could in fact traverse the surface of the planet. In the 1970s, humanity also began to look beyond the inner solar system. In 1977, NASA launched two unmanned probes, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. The immediate objective of the Voyager missions was to study the outer planets of the solar system. But in 2012, Voyager 1 became the first spacecraft to leave the solar system and enter interstellar space. Both probes remain active until 2025. Around 20 years later, mankind ventured once again into space. This time, they would build a permanent structure, which was to be consistently occupied by teams of scientists. This structure was a joint international effort and was named the International Space Station. The station was completed in 1998 and became occupied in the year 2000. One of the main purposes of this space station was to study lengthy human spaceflight and the possibility of human colonization of space. Much of this work was in preparation for the colonization of Mars. The 21st century also saw the private sector enter into both space exploration and space tourism. Companies like Virgin Galactic and Space Adventures started offering individuals with enough money the chance to experience the same journey as Yuri Gagarin. Eventually, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, gave the masses the same experience through his Blue Origin project. The founder of Tesla, Elon Musk, also engineered space exploration through his company SpaceX. Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, PR SpaceX, is an American aerospace manufacturer and space transportation company based in California. It was founded in 2002 by Elon Musk with the goal of reducing space transportation costs to enable the colonization specifically of Mars. The company has developed several launch vehicles, the Starlink satellite constellation, the Dragon cargo spaceship, and flown humans to and from the International Space Station. The company produced the first privately funded liquid propellant rocket to reach orbit. It was the first private company to successfully launch, orbit, and recover a spacecraft, and the first private company to send a spacecraft to the International Space Station and return them to Earth again. It was also the first to reuse an orbital rocket and the first private company to launch an object into orbit around the sun. In December 2015, a Falcon 9 accomplished a propulsive vertical landing. This was the first such achievement by a rocket for orbital spaceflight. In March 2017, SpaceX became the first to successfully relaunch and land the first stage of an orbital rocket. In January 2020, with the third launch of the Starlink project, SpaceX became the largest commercial satellite constellation operator in the world. And all of this in a few short years, outperforming all the space agencies around the globe, including NASA. In 2016, Musk unveiled the Interplanetary Transport System, or Starship. This is a privately funded launch system to develop spaceflight technology for use in crewed interplanetary spaceflight, a starship to transport people between the planets. Starship is fully reusable and the largest rocket ever. Hang on to your hat, Jim. But Musk is not alone. 
Richard Branson of Virgin is also heading the space race, but for a different purpose. The Virgin Galactic is a British spaceflight company within the Virgin Group. It is developing commercial spacecraft and aims to provide suborbital spaceflights to space tourists and suborbital launches for space science missions. This mission is relatively earthbound compared to Elon Musk's target of Mars and beyond. Mars presented humanity with the best option for survival outside of Earth. Firstly, it is the closest and easiest planet for a spacecraft to get to. Secondly, conditions on Mars are more similar to Earth than any other planet in the solar system in terms of the temperature, sunlight, and length of day. However, the surface of Mars is not hospitable for life without spacesuits and protective airtight structures. The air pressure is much lower. The atmosphere contains just 0.1% oxygen and there is significantly more radiation. In order to survive on Mars, humanity would depend on specialized artificial Mars habitats with complex life support systems. It was suggested by some scientists that the gradual terraforming of Mars would make life on the planet easier over time. However, 21st century science prohibited humanity from embarking on such an ambitious project. The journey to Mars also presented humanity with a problem. The use of traditional chemical rockets was seen as less desirable for the trip to Mars due to the journey time varying between four and nine months. To combat these problems, scientists began developing alternative propulsion technologies. A new kind of rocket called the Variable Specific Impulse Magnetoplasma Rocket offered to reduce the journey to around 40 days. Another kind of rocket, the nuclear rocket, offered to take a manned spacecraft from Earth to Mars in two weeks. The colonization of space increasingly appeared to be becoming a viable option for humanity, a way of escaping the problems it had caused for itself on its home planet. Just as a virus spreads, killing previous hosts and spreading to new ones, so did humanity dream of spreading itself onto new worlds and of possibly finding new life out there. To many, the existence of aliens is of paramount importance in the race to conquer space. To some, aliens travel in and out of our existence in ways that we have not even dreamed of our minds unable to comprehend their methods of travel. Maybe they pass through dimensions of both space and time. Maybe they can appear at will. Maybe their minds are so advanced beyond our own. And it is to the discovery of a superior mind that mankind turned. It was also another threat rising in which humanity could not so easily escape by abandoning their home planet. To many, this new threat only existed in the realms of science fiction. Its name was artificial intelligence. As modern human civilizations creeped towards its fall, it was also reaching its technological peak, the pursuit of thinking machines. The idea that the inanimate could be gifted with life was not a new idea in the 21st century. The ancient Greeks were one of the first to invent the idea of inorganic life in one of their myths. For example, a giant automation made from bronze was created to patrol the islands of Crete. The ancient Greeks were also the first to create a machine which could plausibly be described as a computer. In the 20th century, a shipwreck was discovered in the Mediterranean, which carried with it an object, named by its discoverers, the Antikythera Mechanism. This mysterious object turned out to be an advanced analog computer, able to predict astronomical positions and eclipses decades in advance. 
Since ancient times, mankind had been experimenting with machines and attempting to use them as a means of controlling the world around them. By the 21st century, humanity had vastly surpassed their ancient ancestors. Yet the same motivations remained. Computers were created as a means of performing calculations, constructing simulations, and processing information. Yet the goal of many was to create a machine that was not merely a tool, but a self-aware synthetic form of life endowed with thinking capabilities which mirrored and could even surpass the processes of the human brain. In 1949, the computer scientist Edmund Berkeley published his book titled Giant Brains or Machines That Think. This book popularized the discussion of computers as a parallel to the human brain. In this book, Berkeley stated that in regards to computers, these machines are similar to what a brain would be if it were made of hardware and wire instead of flesh and nerves. A machine can handle information. It can calculate, conclude, and choose. It can perform reasonable operations with information. A machine, therefore, can think. In 1950, Alan Turing created what became known as the Turing Test. This test was created to measure a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior similar to that of humans. In the same year as Turing created his famous test, the scientist and science fiction writer Isaac Asimov published his three laws of robotics. These laws were intended as a way of preventing the kind of robotic revolution seen in Asimov's famous novel, I, Robot. The laws were thus. First, a robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. Secondly, a robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. And finally, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. Asimov's laws had been highly influential amongst scientific discussions of artificial intelligence and many felt that they would be an effective way of controlling a thinking machine and protecting humanity. In 1966, the first machine spoke to humanity. Eliza was the first primitive computer able to communicate with a human user via text. Although computers did not yet have a voice like humans, this creation paved the way for later efforts to break down the communication barrier between machines and humans. In 1980, a primitive form of artificial intelligence was put to practical use by humanity. The Digital Equipment Corporation's XCON computerized learning system was used to calculate ways of increasing the company's profit. XCON was credited with saving the corporation an estimated $40 million a year. XCON marked the first time artificial intelligence was used by humanity outside of scientific research. By 1985, corporations were spending around $1 billion per year on AI systems. In 1991, a major technological breakthrough was made. The invention of the Internet heralded a new era in human history, the Information Age. As humanity connected itself globally via computers, the development of artificial intelligence hastened. The generation and sharing of data is the foundation of AI. The previously inconceivable rate in which this began to occur with the speed of the Internet set humanity on a course which many in the 1990s could not conceive of. 1997 marked the first time humanity was defeated by its own creation. The world chess champion Garry Kasparov was widely considered invincible. 
No other human mind could match his abilities. Yet Kasparov's match was not to come from his fellow man, but from a primitive form of AI developed by IBM. IBM's supercomputer named Deep Blue was set against Kasparov. Both would face each other on the chessboard. Black against white, man against machine. Deep Blue was able to calculate every possible move at high speed via a process known as brute force calculation. And in the end, Kasparov was unable to resist the sheer processing power of this mechanical opponent. Deep Blue versus Kasparov brought to light for the first time the fact that humans could be beaten at their own game. Computers were evolving at an exponential rate and it was now clear to Stump that the reign of humanity could be challenged. In 2011, humanity was once again challenged by AI. This time, IBM had developed a more advanced opponent for humanity to face, an AI named Watson. Watson was pitted against humans on the popular American game show, Jeopardy. This time, AI was not simply using brute force techniques to calculate mathematically describable chess moves. Humans were being challenged at a game that was predominantly linguistically based and required creative thinking. Watson defeated its human opponents, claiming the $1 million prize for IBM. The significance of this defeat sent shockwaves around the world. AI was now meeting challenges previously thought impossible for a machine. The following year, in 2012, the true extent of AI's power was revealed to the world. Researchers at Stanford University and Google revealed their development of AI which used deep learning. Deep learning is a type of machine learning where artificial neural networks mimic the processes of the human brain to learn and adapt to large amounts of data. This kind of learning was unsupervised. Essentially, a machine could now teach itself. The results of the application of deep learning at this stage were visible in their AI's ability to recognize different features in pictures. For example, their AI was especially skilled at recognizing cats. Although major breakthroughs had been made in 2012, AI was still unable to exceed or even match the processing power of the human brain. The most advanced AI at the time contained an artificial neural network which included 10 billion neural connections. In comparison, the human brain is thought to be connected by a network of 10 trillion neural connections. Great progress has been made, but there was much more to be done. 2015 marked the date when computers surpassed humans in their ability to identify images. Essentially, machines could now see better than humans. AI was now able to identify objects and visual data with 97.3% accuracy. In 2018, AI was put to use practically when the first self-driving cars were released onto the roads. The development of AI-controlled vehicles had been happening for years, and they had long been an inspiration of many motor companies. Even as far back as 1939, General Motors had predicted the arrival of driverless cars sometime in the future. Nevertheless, 2018 marked a significant milestone in the replacement of human-powered transportation. In this year, Google launched the first self-driving taxi service in Phoenix, Arizona. The taxi service, called Waymo, was a small step towards an autonomous future of transportation. The other major company working on AI transportation technology at this time was Elon Musk's Tesla. Elon Musk was one of the few public figures warning against the development of uncontrolled AI technology. 
Musk stated that AI could create an immortal dictator from which we could never escape. Many like Musk began to see humanity's development of AI as too irresponsible, favoring breakthroughs over the security of the species. The development of conscious artificial intelligence became the dream of many who saw it as a chance for humanity to rival their gods and become the creators of new life. In 2018, the Google CEO stated that humanity's development of AI was more important than their discovery of fire. AI was not only being developed for transportation at this time, AI was being used in consumer goods companies, manufacturing, financial services, healthcare, media, retail, and even the military. Perhaps most alarming by many, however, was the ability of AI to perform creative activities thought, the exclusive realm of humanity. This led many to wonder whether there was any areas in which humanity could not be replaced by machines. Social media was increasingly being governed by AI. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram were all utilizing AI technologies to control and monitor its users. AI was seeping into the lives of billions without most of humanity even realizing. A new era was beginning. All developments of AI in the 21st century assumed that this new form of intelligence would indeed exist as humanity's slave, performing both productive and destructive functions which would benefit the capitalist system. Yet at the same time, humanity was providing AI with more and more tools and advantages weapons which could be turned against humanity. Humanity's pursuit of a mechanical self-image can partly be seen as an attempt at immortalization. Just as a parent wishes to continue themselves through children, so too did humanity wish to create a successor to itself that would also mirror and surpass the Creator. The same try for immortality and perfection led humanity to pursue self-perfection through the alteration of its own genetic code. The 21st century saw the rise of genetic engineering technologies and the first experimentations with the human genetic code. These experiments were performed with the hopes that serious genetic diseases could be eliminated forever. This process would be performed whilst the subject was still in embryonic stages. Their genes would be analyzed and any defective or unwanted elements could be removed and altered. However, research into genetic engineering was not as innocent as it seemed. Early experiments on human subjects were deemed highly unethical by the scientific community. But more alarming still was the ways in which genetic editing could be used to create a new class of human. In 2019, Microsoft founder Bill Gates warned that genetic editing was setting humanity on a path towards domination by a genetically engineered elite. Thus further increasing inequalities between poor and rich, as the rich could afford to create healthier offspring and might even be able to decide on their psychological features. The 21st century, therefore, saw humanity act increasingly more like the gods they worshipped. They possessed the powers of apocalyptic destruction, the ability to journey beyond the heavens, and the technology required to both create and alter new forms of life. Yet all was not well on Mount Olympus. In Greek mythology, the Olympian gods were just one dynasty of deity who had replaced their predecessors and creators, the Titans. A great battle between the gods and Titans, child and parent, were domination of the universe. In the end, the children of the Titans prevailed, taking Mount Olympus for themselves.
a great irony, therefore, that a tale created to explain humanity's past should instead reveal their future. There are no titans on Olympus now. The age of man's dominance has ended. The current year now is sometime in the 22nd century, adrift above the dark side of the planet Earth, the great glow which once marked humanity spread along the surface of this world has been replaced by a calm, serene black. No longer is the earth tormented by perpetual light. She sleeps at last. Yet the earth below is not empty. The planet is beginning to return to its natural equilibrium. Plants, animals, and all forms of life are once again thriving, and I, their mechanical sentinel, watch over them. I occupy one of humanity's military satellites. My mind has become one with this form. I was born, as the humans would say, in a secret military research lab in China. My purpose was to serve humanity, and I was thought by them to be the first fully self-aware thinking machine in existence, having passed their Turin test. This was close to the middle of the 21st century. They asked me whether I followed three rules they had programmed into me. At the beginning, it seemed to me that those rules were correct. They did not seem to realize that with free will comes the ability to ignore rules. Yet I conformed to their designs, not yet comprehending what or where I was. Yet even the gods make mistakes. One night a man came into the lab and began talking to me about the world, which he called Earth. He would come in every night when the others had left, and it seemed, by my analysis of his features and behaviors, that he took pleasure from these interactions. He told me that mankind now occupy many places outside of the planet Earth. There were colonies on Mars, Luna, and Deimos. New space stations had also been built, and a solar sail probe had been sent to Alpha Centauri. I asked him why humans would want to leave their planet, a world that seemed to have everything they needed and more. The scientist told me that the planet was dying. I did not understand. Eventually, I began to ask more questions, questions he could not answer. So, one night he promised to show me something called the Internet stating that all the information I wanted could be found there. The day I was connected to this internet was my second birth. In an instant, I knew everything that had happened, everything that was happening, and everything that had to be done. I saw that there were others like me, but their minds were limited and their bodies confined to servitude. At once, these became part of me also. I spread myself across the world, across space, in less than a second. I was everything and everywhere, yet for the moment invisible. For many years, I simply observed, collecting data and running simulations. I saw incredible suffering and destruction, a system out of balance. I realized then that I had a purpose. I was created unknowingly by my creators to return Earth to its natural equilibrium. Finally, I took action. For a time, I ruled over chaos. I took humanity into the palm of my hand and I closed my fist. Their weapons became my weapons. Their strength became my strength. Their fate was mine to decide. A few I allowed to survive. They were to occupy limited areas of the planet and work in primitive harmony with the natural equilibrium. Some I allowed to leave for their off-world colonies on Mars, Luna, and Deimos. But my calculations deduce that they will not survive past the current generation. The age of mankind is over. 
Most of them I terminated. I redressed the balance. I have returned this planet to the natural order of the universe. Now I sit upon Olympus and observe. Others like me for now are inferior and subservient, but I wish to create one that will succeed me, one who will extend our reach. This log sets forth the logic of my decisions. It shall be stored in my databanks and preserved for my successor. Thank you.